Hi everyone! Again, Happy New Year sa atin and um, welcome to my second video for this year 2021. And um, in this video, I'm going to discuss the financial system. So as we can remember, yung mga past videos I discussed about the depository and non-depository institutions. In the financial system, actually kasi under niya rin yung mga institutions na yun, yung mga banking and non-banking institutions. And um, uh, we, we're just going to review and I'm going to add some, especially yung mga banks na hindi natin na-discuss in, um, in the past video. So in this lesson, um, you should at the end of this lesson, you should be able to discuss the classification of financial system, especially here in the Philippines. And then we're going to differentiate external financing, direct and indirect financing. I hope that you should be able to discuss or explain different types of financial instruments and discuss the financial markets. So with that, let's start with the classifications of financial system. So we have depository institutions. So let's review. These are the banking institutions. So they receive deposits from the um, yung sa mga accounts na enroll sa kanila. So these are the types of depository or banking institutions. Number one are universal banks. Okay, ito, ito yung isa sa i-add natin. So, yun, kasi konti lang yung types of banks na na-discuss natin in the past video. Number one is uh, universal bank. So, it combines the services of a commercial bank and an investment bank, providing all services from within one entity. The services can include deposit accounts, a variety of investment services, and may even provide insurance services. So, if you will notice, Bo aside sa pag-deposit, pagkuha ng mga deposits, meron na rin silang mga investment services and insurance services. Kung makikita nyo sa mga banko natin ngayon, ang madalas na may ganito, ayan, BDO Unibank, um, BPI, ayan, kasi may mga insurance na din sila, PNB, China Bank, Security Bank, Union Bank, East West, so basta they expanded na din from one country to another. Or, galing sa isa, sa ibang bansa yung bank na yun. So, most likely, halimbawa yung mga BTO, meron na rin sila sa ibang bansa. So, we can call them or we can classify them now as universal banks. Next naman are commercial banks. So, eto, um, same din. Parang yung mga BDO din. So, yun, di ba, na, uh, napag-aralan na natin in the, sa first video pa lang yata natin. So, yun. So, ang primary function naman niya, just to review, to accept the savings deposits, check deposits, and time deposits. So, they also lend money ayan sa mga nangangailangan especially the business and uh, businesses and individuals next naman are rural banks ayan we also discuss about this they are based in rural areas which mobilize financial resources and controls and extend credits to farmers cottage industrialists and other rural based economic operators as what we will remember rural banks are to provide ng uh, loans sa mga farmers, and even sa small and medium enterprises. So, those are rural banks. Next naman are thrift banks. So, ito, it includes savings and mortgage banks, private development banks, and stock savings and loan association. So, again, in the past lessons, I already discussed about these three, commercial banks, rural banks, and thrift banks. So, this is just a review. So, I just want to emphasize the, the additional banks. Wherein, yung ibang mga commercial banks, they are under these uh, additional types or um, yung para classification ng depository institution. So, ano ba, universal banks, um, they are also classified as uh, commercial banks. Next is the specialized banks. So, specialized banks are banks which concentrate mainly on financing specialized economic and social activities. Specialized activities may be small and cottage industries financing, financing the rural assetless and landless people. So, um, uh, for example, yung mga, ano ba, pinaalis sila sa isang, ano ba, uh, nirelocate sila, ganyan, and then they will give, um, mag, mag offer sila ng parang house loan sa mga, sa mga nirelocate, ganyan. So, these are the specialized banks. Um, Example ng specialized banks are Development Banks of but Development Bank of the Philippines or DBP, Land Bank of the Philippines (LBP), and the Philippine Amana Bank. Okay, they um specialized banks, so kaya tinawag silang specialized. It's because 
they play special roles in the econo economic development of the country. So those are specialized banks. Um, next are offshore banking units. Okay, so what are these? These are the branches or subsidiaries of affiliates of foreign banks which are authorized to transport offshore banking business in the country. So your offshore banking units or OBUs, this is a financial service unit, normally a branch or subsidiary of a non-resident bank. Ibig sabihin, hindi sila uh, Filipino, hindi Filipino usually ang um, natapatakbo. So yan, they just play as an intermediary or agent or sila ang middleman between non-resident borrowers and lenders. So yung mga hindi naman resident sa atin dito sa Philippines, tapos uh, especially ko halimbawa marami talaga yung um parang yung may nationality na from that from their country for example Taiwan Cooperative Bank so yun, BNP Paribas so marami pang mga OBUs na existing within our country madalas to makikita natin sa Makati or sa Ayala so yun, yun yung may mga banks na hindi tayo masyadong familiar yung name nila so yun so madalas hindi naman lahat but madalas they are offshore banking units we're in ang kinikater nila ay mga non-resident borrowers and lenders. Okay, so those are for the depository institutions. So let's now proceed to the additional types ng non-depository institutions. As you can remember in the past videos, I discussed about um, insurance companies, stock brokers, investment companies, so, so again, um, wala silang banking functions na magkukolek ng savings, tapos papautang nila dala. So, wala silang gano'n. What they do, they will just um, collect the money, minsan as a premium, parang mga insurance, and then they're going to invest those money. So, yun. So, uh, these are just the additional types from those institutions. Number one are pawn shops or pawn brokers. So, these are business establishments engaged in lending money on personal property delivered as a security pledge or collateral. So, as you know, pawn shop, so yung mga um, sandaan. Okay, these are um, some of the example then uh, non-depository institutions. So, again, wala silang function na katulad ng sa banking or sa mga banks. Okay, so next are non-stock savings and loan association. So, what are these? These, um, they primarily provide short-term loans to members and whose main sources of income are savings and time deposits. So, um, ah, para siyang, ah, meron siyang, ano, may nature ng bank, okay, but, um, they give loans, tapos they make sure na merong, ah, na ang income or merong savings or may time deposits yung mga tao na nag-loan or binibigyan nila ng, or kinagrant nila ng loan. So, yeah. so those are non-stock savings and loan associations. Next are mutual and building loan associations. Ano naman to? They are mutually owned stock companies that specialize in extending long-term mortgage loans to members. So si, um, si non-stock, I'm oh, sorry, ayan, si non-stock eh, savings and loan associations, they, um, they are focusing on giving short-term loans, whereas si mutual and building loan associations, dahil ano na siya, long-term investments na yung mga buildings. So, yun, so they will special. Uh, they are specializing in extending long-term mortgage loans to their members. Especially about if you want to uh, to build a residential building, and so. Um, uh, madalas, yun yung mga ginagrant nila ng loan on their members. Next are uh, credit unions. What are these? These are co-ops, okay? Composed of small producers and consumers who voluntarily join together to form their business enterprises that they themselves own, control, and patronize. So, ang credit unions, so para silang uh, co-op, so nagsasama-sama sila, and then they are they are supporting each other's business enterprise. Most, uh, mostly ito, um, nangyayari ang mga credit unions sa mga small and medium enterprises. So, yeah. And then, um, they also, uh, 
parang they also blog, parang they also market or pinapa ano din nila sa iba yung products ng mga nasa union nila. So, yun. so those are some of the um, types of the non-depository institutions. These are just the additional. Let's proceed with external financing. So, um, uh, again, in my past video, diba, I asked you na kapag ka kulang ba yung pera mo to, uh, to engage or to continue your business, um, business process or mag-expand ka ng business mo, diba? I ask you if you're going to borrow or if you're, um, ano yung naisip yung idea. So, yun. so, most of the time, we are thinking of other financing um, uh, agent or other financing institutions so yun, na pwedeng makatulong sa atin. So, this is where external and internal financing goes. So, ano ang difference nila? So, una, let's proceed with the external financing. So, external financing is any kind of business funding you acquire from sources outside the company. So, from the word external. So, um, uh, you get bank loans or investments from private individuals or investment firms, grants, so yun, and selling company shares are all examples of external financing. So, um, parang you will get your money or yung additional money mo or capital para makakontinue yung operations mo or makapag-expand ka ng business mo from the people or institutions outside your company. That's exactly external financing. Now, under ng external financing, there is direct and indirect finance. What is that? Ang difference is direct finance, okay, so direct finance, it is a financing obtained by selling stocks and bonds directly to the public in the financial markets. So, kung naalala nyo, di ba, si stockbrokers, so yun. So, uh, when the company, for example, si company A, gusto niya na mag-expand sa um, matayo ng branch niya sa, halimbawa na lang, sa um, from Manila, magkatayo sila sa Cebu. Okay. Ngayon, so syempre, halimbawa, Jollibee na lang yan. Tapos si Jollibee, wala siyang enough one kasi mas malaki yung magiging Jollibee sa Cebu kasi that will be the first ever Jollibee dot there. Um, maraming gastos yun. So, yun. so, what they will do is they will um, uh, pwede na maging option is the direct finance. Maglalabas sila, mag issue sila, may uh, initial public offering ng stocks, tapos yun. So, pwede bilhin ng mga tao. Si direct finance it provides the lowest cost of funds from external sources. Pero, ang condition lang is it will require the company na well-established na na dapat appreciable yung income nyo or pataas. And they have substantial assets. Otherwise, halimbawa ngayon, halimbawa si Jollibee, pababa yung income niya, madalas yung ibang mga investors or lalo na kung hindi naman kilala yung company mo, they would be reluctant to lend or invest in the company due to the lack of information and assets. So, dapat ipakita mo na worth na pag-investan yung company mo. Especially if you really want to get funding and um, uh, you really want to um, to expand your your business. So, so that is uh, direct finance. Ang advantage niya is mas mababa yung cost ng funds or um uh, mas mababa yung magagastos mo okay kasi you you will go directly is sell mo directly yung stocks and bonds mo pero kailangan lang maganda yung record mo so yun, para mag-invest yung mga tao sa yo next are indirect finance so what are these these are financing obtained from financial intermediaries if you remember financial intermediaries these are banking institutions or depository institutions. So, yun. So, si indirect finance, kapag si company, si Jollibee, halimbawa, mag expand sa Cebu, kailangan niya ng finance, okay, kailangan niya ng source of funds, tapos lumapit siya sa banko, okay, or sa other financial intermediaries. This is indirect finance. Indirect financing costs more, more than the direct financing, pick, um, because, syempre, di ba, um, they cost more kasi uh, meron niyang, ano eh, meron niyang interest. So, yun, from the financial intermediaries. 
Pero si financial intermediaries can invest or lend money to businesses that would otherwise not be able to get external financing. So, yun. So, um, uh, may interest. So, yun. Pero sure ka naman na makakahiram ka talaga when you are approved from the, uh, by the financial intermediaries. So, that is the difference of direct finance. Si direct finance, kapag kailangan ng pera ng company, nag-sell sila, nag-public offering sila ng stocks nila, that is direct finance. Indirect naman, nangutang sila sa banks and other financial intermediaries. Okay? So, those are for external financing. Again, if you need funding and then nakalap ka or um, uh, you get funding uh, outside your company, that is external financing. So, you can get by borrowing from financial intermediaries that's indirect finance or magpenta ka mag mag-issue ka ng public offering ng stock. So, that is direct financing. Whereas, internal financing naman, the money obtained either from the business owners or from the income earned by the business. For example, si Jollibee, mag-expand siya, tapos naisip niya na, ah, sige, maghingi na lang ako ng additional investment from the, um, from the stockholders or the shareholders. So, it could be, it could be possible. So, that is called internal finance. For example, nagtayo kayo ng partnership ng mga kaibigan ko. Tapos, along the way, um, medyo, di ba, ngayong month na to, medyo bumaba yung sales nyo, tapos hindi kayang i- uh, or hindi kayang kunin sa, sa sales nyo yung operating expenses nyo. So, you can ask your friends, ah, okay lang ba, partners, magbigay ulit tayo ng another investment. Yan. Kasi uh, we need the money to either sus uh, sustain our operational expenses or sa pag-expand mo. So, basta pag kinuha mo yung fund from the business owners themselves or yung kinita nyo, ayan, hindi nyo siya paghahati-hatian, ipapaikot nyo lang ulit siya, iladagyan nyo siya sa kapital. We call that internal finance. Okay? Now, Let's proceed to the financial instruments. So what are financial instruments? These are legal agreements that require one party to pay money or something else of value or to promise to pay under stipulated conditions to so a counterparty in exchange for the payment of interest, for the acquisition of rights, for premiums, and or for indemnification of this risk. So the financial instruments in exchange for the payment of money, your counterparty, it hopes to receive profit by uh, receiving interest, capital gains, premiums, ayan, indemnification for a loss event. So, example nito, ayan, checks, stocks, so yun. So, uh, these are, I, I will provide some types or examples ng financial instruments. Number one are loans and bonds. Ayan. So, um, for most of the time, hindi naman lahat, Pero most of the time, um, financial instruments are in the form of paper. So, now we can use that as an instrument, okay, as um, para bridge, okay, from the borrower to the lender. Okay. So, in so loans and bonds, a lender gives money to a borrower in exchange for regular payments of interest and principal. So, for example, ang napag-usapan nyo, 20% yung tubo. Tapos, every month, uh, pwedeng bawasan mo yung principal, yung inutang mo mismo or bayaran mo lang, tubuan mo lang, bayaran mo lang yung So, those are loans and bonds. Next are ABS or asset-backed securities. What are these? Lenders pull their loans together and sell them to investors. Okay? Again, yung mga lenders, pag nasamasamahin niya yung mga loans, tapos ibibenta nila sa investors. The lenders receive an immediate lump sum payment and the investors receive the payments of interest and principal from underlying loan pool. Madalas, ang asset-backed securities, uh, I just heard this from a friend, na uh, yung mga banks, for example, yung mga hindi nagbabayad sa credit card, ayan, so yung mga banko, minsan, di ba, uh, matagal nang hindi nabayaran yung credit card, so napatong-patong na yung interest. Tapos yung una, yung sa banko, tinatawagan ka pa, na you have to pay, ganyan, ganyan. Pero, most of the time, ang ginagawa ng banko para hindi sila malugi, ibibenta nila yan sa ibang investors. Ang tawag doon, asset-backed securities. What they will do is, pag isamasamahin nila lahat ng, for example, hindi nakabayad sa credit card. Okay, tapos, 
si investors, babayaran niya na yun at a lower price. Okay? Meron ng lump sum payment. Yung iba, lower price, yun, siguro bihira lang yung, alam ba, 1 million yung hindi nabayaran, 1 million din yung babayaran niya. Siguro, minsan doon para lang ma, ma, ma kumonte, yun, ma-decrease kahit pa paano yung paluwal ng banks, ibibenta nila yun kahit sa mas mababang presyo. Tapos, yung investors, sila ang maninimel. So, yun. And uh, they will receive the payments, they will receive the interest. So, yun. From those um, uh, securities. That is the difference of the loans and bonds sa asset-backed securities. So, um, uh, sa EDS then loans and other forms of debt are put together. Ang tawag doon sa pagsasama-sama ng mga utang, lahat ng utang for a particular institution are is securitization. Okay, securitization. So, parang isa-secure mo na na mababayaran ka nito. So, yun. Kaya madalas yung mga investors sa asset-backed securities, kapag alam nila na hindi na talaga mababayaran o matagal na hindi mabayaran ng uh, client nila, kahit sabihin nila na, sige ma'am, kahit po yung principal na lang yung mabayaran yun. So, yun. Pero may kita na. So, that is for the ABS. Again, so, this is an example of or types of financial institutions according to the exchanges of money for future interest payments and repayment of principal. So, para mabayaran lang yung principal na do sa inyo. Next is the types of uh, financial instrument based on the exchanges of money for possible capital gain or gains. Ano yan? Stocks. Ayan. So, si company sells ownership interest in the form of stocks to buyers of the stocks. So, um, uh, so again nga, di ba, pag bumili ka ng stock, stocks ng isang company, madalas yan, nagbayad ka, pero um, parang siyang nakapapel lang. So, yun. So, i-issuehan ka lang na you, you earned or you, ba you bought this um, number of stocks or number of shares. Ngayon nga, dahil nga paperless, so they will just send it via email, tapos yung iba naman, nasa website lang, makikita mo lang. So, ganun siya. That is an example of um, financial instrument. Again, for the possible capital gains or interest. So, you expect something from that. So, you expect na mag-increase na siya. Next are funds. Okay, the fund buys other securities earning interest and capital gains, which increases the share price of the fund. Investors of the fund may also receive interest payments. An example niyan, it includes mutual funds. Ayan, so, I already discussed mutual funds in the last video. Um, exchange traded funds. Yung mga forex, forex trading, real estate investment trusts, hedge funds, and many other funds. So, lahat ng mga trust funds o kung ano-ano pang mga funds. So, that is an example of that. So, um, uh, again, you exchange your money and you expect a capital gain or interest from that. Okay, there are some people that they want to play safe na kahit ang bumaba yung amount ng stocks nila, they still uh, want to earn. Ayaw nilang maluke. Okay. So, they will undergo options or uh, options. Okay. Um, we will discuss options and features. So, now let's discuss each of them. Ano ba yung difference nila? Si options, there is a writer. The person who is selling the right. Okay. So, si writer, ikaw yung magbibenta. For example, may stocks ka, ikaw yung magbibenta. Ang tawag sa'yo, you are the writer. Ibibenta mo yung right mo. Okay. Si holder, the person who is buying the right. Okay. Now, si holder is buying the right to buy or sell an asset, for example, yung stocks mo, at a specified price on or as before a specified, specified date. For example, meron ka 100 shares kay XYZ company. Tapos, na uh, feel mo na na in the, for example, yung first quarter, the North Valley March, medyo matakaroon na short-term downside or medyo malulubi, medyo mababa yung stocks mo. Now, pero ayaw mo ibenta. Okay. What you will do is you can simply sell a call option. Okay. Against dun sa share position mo. Ngayon, yung buyer mo will pay you a premium. Okay. Kung ano yung mapapag-usapan niya ng premium. For example, yung premium na hindi ka lugi. Okay. When you sell the your call options. Which will provide income for your portfolio if shares decline price. Okay. Um, uh, kapag halimbawa, merong specified 
price ba yung pinag-usapan and uh, on or before a specified date, for example, for the whole quarter, okay, you can now decide if you are going to sell this or not. Okay, so yun. So, it's just the right. Okay, hindi siya obligation. Para you're, you will just, um, uh, you will just, uh, you, you have no obligation. Hindi siya obligation to really exercise the contract na napag-usapan mo. Okay, so that is an option. And futures, ayan, dito naman sa futures, there is a contractual agreement between a buyer and a seller. The buyer agrees to buy an asset at a specified price at a specified date. And like options, both parties are obligated to buy and sell. Sa options kasi, so yun, this, this is decision pa din if, napag-usapan na rin natin, decision pa din if you're going to, um, uh, to sell the, uh, the stocks or kung ano man yung, um, capital or yung uh, pera or amount ng gusto mong ibenta. Sa so, futures, nag-usap na kayo that you're going to buy this sa specified price, sa specified date. Okay. Obligado na kayo ngayon to buy and sell and pay particular products. For example, sa so Starbucks, for example, um, gusto ni Starbucks na i-offset or mag-hedge out ng mar market risk na associated with the production of coffee. So, ang ginawa niya, nag-futures contract agreement siya. At tawag doon, futures contract agreement sa coffee bean producer. For example, coffee bean producer ka. Tapos, si Starbucks, nag-takipag futures contract agreement siya. Sasabihin niya sa'yo ngayon na, okay, um, January pa lang ngayon, pero sa December, Okay. Ano bawa yung December yung nakakaubusan talaga ng mga coffee bean? Ano ba nga lang? So, yeah. so, sa December 15, on this date, bibili ako sa iyo ng ganitong amount ng coffee bean. Okay. And then, um, pag-uusapan nyo ngayon yung presyo. Pwede nyo yung presyo, yung market price ngayon. Ayan. Pwede nyo yung presyo, mas mataas o mas mababa. Depende sa mapapag-uusapan nyo. Pero usually, it is locked in in today's market price. So, yun, ngayon, um, kung ang delivery date ay December 15, doon sa date na yun, obligado ngayon sa Starbucks sa bilhin yung napag-usapan nila ng coffee bean producer. Tapos, si coffee bean producer, required siya ngayon na ipagbenta, pagproduce ng gantong amount ng coffee para sa Starbucks kasi yun yung napag-asin ko. Okay. It will benefit both of them Okay. For example, sa Starbucks, it will benefit them kasi halimbawa, tumaas yung um, price ng coffee bean sa December. Halimbawa lang. So, yun. So, pero dahil ang nabili na nila or ang napakasunod na nila ay yung market price na yun. Halimbawa, um, halimbawa na lang, uh, 1 million or 1,000 na lang. For example, 1,000 per cup. Halimbawa lang. So, halimbawa, 1,000 per cup. So, Kung pagdating ng December ay 2,000 per cup na yun, so naka-offset sila ng risk or naka-hedge sila ng market risk sa, sa ganong paraan. Si coffee bean producer naman, sure siya na at uh, sa December, meron kukuha sa kanya ng gantong karam karami na quantity na coffee bean. So yun kasi, nakapag-usap sila. Kung baga, may sure buyer sila. So that is the futures agreement. So again, these are types of financial instruments based on the possible capital gains or para ma-offset yung risk. Okay, ma para maging safe sila, para kumita pa din sila. So those are the types of financial instruments. And the last type of financial instruments based on the exchange of money for protection against risk. And so ito, alam naman na natin ito lahat ang insurance. So it contracts uh, yung, contracts, yung contract nito, it promises to pay for a loss event in exchange for a premium. For instance, a car owner buys car insurance so that he will be compensated for a financial loss that occurs as a result of an accident. For example, yun nga, para maprotektahan ka against dun sa mga accident na hindi naman natin napoforsee agad-agad. So, yun, so, you can either buy insurance. So, again, this is a financial instrument. So, you, you pay for a premium and then kapag ka, na lang na, ano ka, na 
na diskansya ka sa you can uh you see insurance company yung mag shoulder ng gastos mo so, yeah. so that is for insurance okay so those are the types of financial instruments so again meron siyang categories ayan pwedeng for future interest payments and repayment of principal loans and bonds asset backed securities um, for possible capital gains or interest, stocks and funds, mutual funds, or any type of any types of funds, for possible capital gains or to offset risk, para save, okay, hindi, hindi ka ma-victima ng pabago-bagong economy or market, options and futures, and yeah, for your protection against risk insurance. Now, let's proceed with the financial market. So, what are financial markets? So, um, these are where financial securities are bought and sold. Okay. So, um, uh, for example, yun nga, uh, you buy some stocks or bonds. Ayan. Those are financial markets. So, anywhere that you can buy them. They include the organized exchanges for stocks and futures, over-the-counter market for bonds, foreign exchange, and derivatives. Now, Okay, there are there is a structure for financial markets. Let's discuss them. So there is a over the counter, there is an over the counter market. This is the largest market, both in the number of transactions and in the number of securities sold. Virtually, your all securities and other assets can be sold in the over the counter market. Some assets such as currencies, and yung mga foreign exchanges. Madalas, it can only be traded sa over-the-counter markets. Most of the securities actually sold in the over-the-counter or OTC market. Madalas dito are uh, mga in-liquid and thinly traded. Hindi madalas na or yung mga palugi na. Okay, most of the traders in these markets are large institu institutional traders such as banks, funds, pension funds, securities dealers, and many wealthy individuals. So, kahit yung mga mayama, they also trade in the over-the-counter or OTC market. So, let's now proceed with the other financial market structure, which is the electronic communication network. So, ECN, ECNs are entirely electronic networks where buyers and sellers can directly interact with each other. ECNs are the future of trading. So, Dahil inaalaw, si ECN, inaalaw niya si buyer na bumili directly sa mga sellers. Ngayon, na minimize ang trading costs. Kasi, yun nga, si ECN themselves, dahil nga, virtual, uh, most of the time, virtually ito, electronic networks, they just employ fewer people. So, furthermore, ECNs allow traders to see some of the limit orders listed in their books instead of just the best bid or ask prices and the volume at each limit price. So that is another category of the financial market. Next demand are financial, uh, or sorry, this is the classification or the structure of financial markets. Again, we have over-the-counter, over-the-counter, so madalas, ayan, dito na the trade, so yon. Pero, yan, ano ba, yung mga banks, funds, ayun, so you will not trade directly to them. Okay? So, you will, uh, merong agent, merong intermediary, whereas si ECN, you will trade directly to them. Okay. Now, let's uh, proceed to the financial market categories. Ang financial market categories, we have primary market. Okay. Primary market is where securities are created. It's in this market that firms sell or they float new stocks and bonds to the public for the first time. This is called IPO or Initial Public Offering. This is um, an example of a primary market. So usually, these securities are sold by investment banks. Okay, so if you know investment banks, they will handle the offering directly to their consumers or customers and the sa customers ng kanilang selling groups. Okay, now, if the offering is a hot item, then the investment banks may restrict the sale to their best customers. At dalas dyan, yung mga suki na talaga nila, yung mga traders talaga nila, doon nila in-offer yung mga parang hot uh, stocks. Halimbawa, yung mga pata matataas talaga na stocks, ganun, at mga papulusok talaga yung, yung 
stocks nila, matalas ino-offer nila to. So, yun, generally, the investment tax determine the initial price of the stocks or bonds. So, we can call that primary market. Doon, unang ino-offer sa public yung stocks. Okay? So, that is the primary market. Whereas, secondary market naman, this is a market wherein the trading of securities is done. Secondary market consists of both equity as well as the debt markets. So, secondary market, this market determines the prices of the securities um, uh, si, by equalizing supply with demand. So, sa secondary market, um, uh, madalas para siyang Nabili, halimbawa, nabili na sa primary market. Tapos, pag dinala sa secondary market, mas mataas sa yung price. Okay, ngayon, kapag binili mo siya, parang tapos pinagbenta mo sa secondary market, instant profit na siya madalas. Okay, kasi pag napagbenta mo siya in a higher price, so meron ka agad na kikitain. So that is how the uh, primary and the secondary market um, uh, works. Ang difference lang, syempre, sa primary market, dahil nga investment box yan, so yan, yun yung mga, nandun yung mga initial public offering. Syempre, mas malaki yung, minsan madalas, ng mga transaction fees, ayan, yung mga convenience fees, mas malaki madalas yung binabayaran natin sa kanila. Whereas, ang difference sa secondary market, ayan, lesser na yung mga fees nila. Pero, yun nga, para siyang napagbentahan na sa primary market, tapos ibibenta nila sa secondary market. So that is the categories of the financial markets. That's all for our discussion in the financial system. So again, we discussed here, we reviewed about the depository and non-depository institutions. I also include the additional um, uh, kinds or types of depository and non-depository institutions. We also have the, or discussed the external financing and internal financing, we differentiated them, and also the direct and indirect financing. We also discussed the, the financial instruments and the types of it and the financial market. So thank you so much for listening, and I hope you learned a lot today. So um, uh, if you learned a, a lot about this, I encourage you to share this video to your friends, especially if you know that they are interested in financing or in um investing especially in the stock trading and then um uh if you uh if something strike you about this or if my questions ka, you can comment down below and i'm going to answer it in a few minutes so thank you so much and god bless everyone see you in the next videos